And extremist woke gender ideology continues to threaten women's sports with trans athlete Austin Killips, a man who only started cycling just four years ago, winning the top women's prize at the weekend. So while it's obvious this trend is starting to impact on the safety and protection of women's rights, it's also becoming more widespread, with recent statistics suggesting 12 percent of millennials now either identify as transgender or gender non-conforming. But Lionel Shriver has her own controversial theory as to why these numbers have soared, asking in a brilliant new column for Unheard whether trans is becoming the new anorexia. Unsurprisingly, I'm sure you could have predicted this, it sparked outrage from the trans lobby. One critic, for example, wrote of her essay that it erases trans people patronizes young people and makes anorexia out to be an identity fad. But to respond now, I'm delighted to say Lionel Shriver joins me live. So, Lionel, your column, your thesis prompted huge debate. Can you just outline uh, why you made this comparison between anorexia and trans? Well, first off, I have to warn you that if I have caused some kind of storm on social media, I don't know anything about it. What you just read <laughs> Lucky out you. is the only comment I have read. Um, it's, it's a, I have to commend it to everyone. It's the perfect self-protection, complete obliviousness. Yeah. It sounds um, blissful, I have to say. It's, it's a t but mark my words, Lionel, it caused a big storm, okay? Everyone was talking about this column. Oh, how thrilling. Um, I, I think that the conditions have a fair bit in common. Yeah. Uh, they're both dysmorphias, which means mm. a, a distorted impression of the body. And so that a, a, a teenage girl will look in the mirror and, and she's emaciated and she thinks she's fat. Uh, whereas a teenage girl will look in the mirror now and, and see a boy. Um, and, it seems they both both conditions seem to be hitting the same population, and that is, you know, especially right now, teenage girls, uh, usually girls who are a little insecure, um, suggestible, uh, perhaps I mean sometimes an, uh, uh, autistic. You know, there is an intersection in both conditions with autism and anxiety and depression, and you know the whole package. Uh, and uh, they both uh, seem to be motivated, at least in part, in not wanting to become mature women. Mm. And uh, I noted in the essay that having been a mature woman and having submitted to various physical indignities of womanhood, I'm sympathetic. <laughs> I don't mind, I, I don't blame them for wanting to get out of it. But anorexics are starving off the signs of, of womanhood, and uh, the trans population is actually even more efficient about it, and they just get their breasts slopped off. Mm. Um, and, I, and I guess the problem is there's almost existential growth at the moment, especially amongst young biological women who now define themselves as trans. And you talk about, uh, Lionel, how in the 80s and 90s you saw personally a similar thing happen with anorexia where people almost coveted it as, as if it made them more interested on the social circuit. Do, do you think potentially that's happening with some young women, that it's almost a, a trend, a fad to, to be trans or be gender non-conforming? Um, well, when I was uh, teaching in uh, New York colleges in the 1980s, I noticed that I had a lot of uh, female students coming into conferences confiding in me that uh, they were anorexic. Oddly, uh, any number of these girls were not especially skinny. Mm. They didn't look as if they had an eating disorder. Um, but what that gradually revealed to me is that they wanted to be anorexic. Whether or not they had an eating disorder was uh, up to a doctor to determine, but uh, it was clear that it was a prestige diagnosis. And I, I think that that's what's happened with trans. It is a it, it, it provides status. And um, in fact, uh, 
the uh, whistleblower, Jamie Reed, has uh, said that w one of the biggest problems right now is that it provides status for the parents. And mm. so that in liberal enclaves, uh, democratic parents are pushing their kids to be trans, especially if they seem, it seems as if they might be plain old gay. Which is just Which is no, well, so no passe these days, Lionel. Who would just want to be plain old gay or lesbian? You know, if you're gay or lesbian these days, you're basically a bigot, aren't you? Uh, you know, just ask Joanna Cherry, who's discovering the way that she's being treated by the likes of Nicola Sturgeon within the SNP. So, so what do you think uh, parents and authorities need to do, Lionel, to stop this developing as a trend and to make sure that actually if young people are trans, that this is something that they really are, rather than uh, embracing some sort of social trend. Because, of course, the problem is if you start being treated for it, we've seen that the likes of puberty blockers and, and the surgery can be irreversible. And there are lots of young women now who want to detransition. This is a problem for adults. It's Adults created this. So... I'm not really dissing uh, young people uh, who have fallen prey to uh, uh, various uncertainties, which hit all of us at that age, uh, trying on different hats, if you will, as to who you are. When you're a teenager, you don't know who you are. I'm, I'm very sympathetic with that. Uh, it's the adults I'm not sympathetic with uh, who have put together in very short order an, a, an assembly line so that as soon as you say anything about, well, I'm, I'm questioning my gender, I, I wonder if I might be more comfortable living my life as, a, as the opposite sex. It's just whoosh, whoosh. Yeah. Into this. Here's the you know, pills. No, no real therapy. Let's chop off the boost. No, I agree. We have to let teenagers, and believe me, I experienced this, you know, teenagers experiment with their gender and their sexuality. And very often, uh, they're going to come to the conclusion that actually they probably are in the right gender. But Lionel Shriver, it was a fascinating column. Thank you so much.